Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today for another episode of the Memories of Plymouth where we bring in people from the area, Plymouth and the surrounding areas and ask them if they would be willing to take an interview as this person has, but I don't think you can see who this person is yet. <laughs> I'm looking, I'm looking. We've been doing this for four years now and you must know that we're in the middle of COVID so we're only allowed to have one person here. In the past we've had husband and wife We've had brothers and cousins come in, um, but you notice that we're six feet apart. Let's begin with the interview. I would like to introduce you all to Robert Moulton. Some of you know him by Bob, some of you know him by Bobby. We'll see how you want to be called today. Bob. Bob is fine. Yep, Bob's fine. All right, all right. Thank you for joining us, Bob, seriously. It's always fun to meet another uh, resident of the area and most fun for me to hear the stories that you're going to be sharing with us today over the next hour. Uh, most of the people know who you are in the town, many will, but somebody won't. So we're going to ask you a few questions, very, very simple, your name, where you came from, you know, that type of thing. And you can pass whenever you want to. Okay. All right, let's begin. You ready? I'm ready. All right. <laughs> State your full name. Robert V. Moulton. V? B. And what does it stand for? Bernard. Bernard, is that a namesake? It's named after somebody? Perhaps, I'm not sure. All right, yeah. all right. Where were you born? At the Livermore Hospital. All right. And in what? Plymouth and uh, Campton Town Line. Uh, do you know which side you were born on? <laughs> Probably in the middle. <laughs> I think they had a choice then, whether or not it was Plymouth or it was Campton. Yeah. Um, and what year were you born? Uh, 1940. 1940. All right. Let's see. Um, grandparents. Would you share with the audience who your grandparents <clears throat> were? Yeah. Uh, Lulu and Benjamin Moulton. Okay. Lulu. L-U-L-U? Yep. All right. Yeah. And their occupations? My uh, grandmother was a teacher. Uh, I, I'm not really sure what year she graduated from the, the normal school, but mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, she taught in the back room of the uh, farmhouse until the school, Limoe Falls School, was built. So we need to explain to the audience when you say farmhouse, their farmhouse. Yeah. Their Please farmhouse. do. Yeah. All right. So they, ha you, you own a farm that you've inherited over time. No, no? I, I have my own. You have your own. Yeah. All right. So let's separate people own that now. Different All right. people. All right. And hmm, that's interesting. So you were that close to the school. Yeah. Did you walk to school? I walked walk to school and it was only two houses up, like, you know. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And the school that came secondarily, that was, that's Livermore School? It's yeah. a one through eight school? That's right. Yep. All right. Yep. Who was the teacher? Well, it was uh, Mildred Avery from, El well, West Campton or Ellsworth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, for eight years. And was she the only teacher for that grade? Oh grades? yeah, for everybody, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, can you talk about that a little bit? What subject matters? Can you remember some of the subject matters that you were taught? Oh gosh, I can't remember that, <laughs> but everything was all, all put together, you know. All yeah. right. How many students maybe? One through eight. I'd say probably, there must have been 20, 25 maybe. All right. In, in the school. I'm yeah. interested. Did you have recess way back then? Always, yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to look at my notes just for a second. Uh, let's stay <clears> with <throat> school if we can. Um, uh, again, the subject matters would be reading and math and language and what was fun for you? Probably the math was the best, hmm. and uh, other than that, like the normal, mm -hmm. normal uh, studies. You worked there at the school. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I was more or less a janitor, or whatever you might call. Mm -hmm. I got a dollar and a quarter a, a month to sweep, make sure they had water, and you know, blackboards were clean. Mm -hmm. It was a big deal back then. Well, I was just going to say a dollar and a quarter for a month. Thank yeah. you for doing that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. 
Um, we're in eighth grade now. <clears throat> You're coming into Plymouth, and there's quite a few towns that feed into the Plymouth High School. Right. What What years were you at Plymouth High School? Fifty four to uh, fifty eight. Can you share some of the teachers' names that you had then? Oh, well, Mrs. Riley, or Miss Riley. Um, I was going to say, I shouldn't say it, but Peg Leg Frazier. Okay. <laughs> I, hope, I hope Tom Balpy's not watching this. That well, was I hope mother. not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh huh. What were they like? Very strict. Very strict. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who was the principal at the time? Julius. Okay. Remember Julius? Yes. Yeah, him. He's, he's mine. Yeah. Mm hmm. I think he had probably just taken over then, because prior to him he had been uh, Principal Keach, K-E-A-C-H? Uh, I think, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. but, what was high school like? Well, it was, you know, everybody had, had friends, you know, good friends, and, and not many people that were, you know, angry or anything, you know, everybody was different than they are today. Did you walk to school from Campton? Did you drive to school? <clears throat> no, I got a ride, mm -hmm. ride from you know from the house to school. That's lucky. Did you ever have to take a bus? No buses. Oh, there weren't any buses. Oh my gosh. Okay. I wonder when that. Who the heck? Charlie Morris. It, was when they first thing? started, you know, uh, on our route, anyhow, there were buses around town here, I think. Mm -hmm. Wow. But, I was just trying to remember who our, our bus driver was, Charlie Morse. Charlie Morse. <laughs> oh, that's way back when. Um, were you in a position to be involved with extracurricular activities? And I'm trying to think at that time what you would have had. Uh, any sports, uh, theater productions, yearbooks? You know, I, I played uh, all three sports, you know, baseball, basketball, football. Mm hmm and try to, you know. You tried to, huh? <laughs> I think you're being very humble on that one. <laughs> I think you are, as we're going to see. Who were the coaches during that time? Oh, boy. Uh, Coach Ferrigno. And I guess later on it was uh, Wilbur Hickson. Mm -hmm. He just passed away. Did he really? Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure on that. Huh, mm -hmm. That's too bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And what sports would they have been related to? Mr. Ferrigno would have coached? Foot, football, and um, Hickson would do basketball and baseball, you know. All right. Yeah. And if I asked you to describe what they were like, what might you say? Tough. Tough. All right. Yeah. That was it? Tough? It was tough. If you didn't play the way you should, you made damn sure you did. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> or you uh, maybe took an extra couple laps around the field or, you know. Used a little bit of exercise. And you respected them. Hmm. If you learn from your coaches, what might it be that you learned? Respect. Thank you. Can I say the same thing? If there was a teacher that you learned from, what did you learn from that person outside of content material? Hmm. Perhaps the same, you know. All right. That's good enough. That's good enough. Yeah. Way back. Yeah. Um, I heard you're an athlete. You've enjoyed sports all your life. So I'd like to center it, focus in on that, if I could, please, for the audience. So when did you start playing sports? Oh, with uh, Little League, with Bernard Smith. He used to, uh, well, have a bunch of teams to, you know, We'd go to different towns and play, and he always took us, you know. Mm -hmm. um, probably the, uh, the most exciting trip that we took, uh, we went to Fenway Park, and uh, we met Ted Williams and shook hands and all that, you know, but there was never any pictures taken, you know, At that, time. that I know of. But Vernon was good with the with everybody, you know. How did you get to Boston? Do you recall if it was a bus or a no, caravan? No, uh, people just drove us, you know, different cars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And was that at the end of the season, like a uh, yeah, celebratory? Yeah, towards the end of the summer, yeah, before you went back to school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was it like saying you 
met Ted Williams, the couldn't talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, what would you say? It's like, you know, wow. Wow, wow. that's exciting. That is exciting. Mm. After Little League, you're into high school. Did you have any sports when you were up in um, the Livermore School? Not really. They're just the regular playground type of stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. So we moved into high school, and now you have Everything sports. Everything was different, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to, and so you're in high school. Did you have to try out for the team? Yeah, you did more or less. You know, you just they picked you as you as you uh, you know played and practiced. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there was no particular place that I knew where I should play. You know, they always told you where you could play. You know. Did you ever regret not playing a certain position? No. Since they told you what to do? No. All right. No. All right. Hmm. And like in uh, high school, I was, as a freshman, I got a chance to play third base after Stuart Curtis broke his leg. And uh, the reason I was put to third is because of uh, one particular day I was playing right field and uh, I threw a guy out going to first. From so right the, field yeah. to first. So I had a fairly decent arm, so that's, I guess, why they moved, moved me over to third. So. Mm -hmm. And did you continue to play in that position? Yeah. And I enjoyed it? Enjoyed it, yeah. No what? matter where I went, I could play third. Mm -hmm. I, would, I didn't even have to ask. Wow. Uh, if you think of baseball, is there a story behind baseball that comes to mind? Be it the coach or your players or an event, uh, the best play of your life. I'm making that up. But. I would say they were all great, but one in particular, I hit a b ball off the uh, college field house one day, and that was probably the longest ball I ever hit. So let me in describe that. DNM Park. Bit. So you're in DNM Park. Right. We're at the corner closest to the main road. Mm -hmm. And you hit a ball that actually went to the field house. Field house, PE center. Wow. Yeah. And and there's no recording of that, I'm sure. Oh, probably not. Mm -hmm. just, wow. just memories. Mm -hmm. That's neat. That is very very neat. So another sport, please. We've done baseball, football. Did you travel at that time, that many years ago, to other team, uh, other homes, <clears throat> uh, hometown teams? Yeah, uh, well, I played for Concord League, uh, I forget, maybe three or four years, maybe three years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had one little incident down there. I hit a long ball and went foul, and uh, everybody kind of chuckled. Well, that ball went over and took my windshield out. It took your My windshield. own car. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. All right. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I bet you didn't think it was so funny no, after no, that. No, not really. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and what was the name of that league? Would it have been a league? Yeah, it was a league, and I played for the Ferns. Ferns. And they were out of Concord. Yeah, wow. Concord surrounded team uh, mm -hmm. towns, you know. Wow. Did you travel from here to there? Yeah, usually twice a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. In the evening, you know. Wow. Wow. We had a town team here one time. We probably, I don't know. Do we have town teams playing baseball today? No. All right. No, and as a matter of fact, I'm not, they have a little league, but it's not as great as it used to be, you know? Well, let's talk about it, town it, teams. I don't know why. It's, yeah, I, um, I just remember seeing pictures of this year's town team, who the players were, et cetera. Yeah. So how many years did they go in the 60s and 70s and 80s? Well, uh, I'm trying to think. I I coached in the league for four years, and that was in well, I'd be in the '70s, right. you know. And uh, little league continued for quite a while, but now I'm not sure. You know, it's, hmm. it seems like there's not many kids that are playing sports. I I, I too I many. Don't know that. Oh, fingers. Fingers. Yeah, that's their exercise now. 
Yeah. All right, we're being a little cynical there. I don't know if there is a town team. That's a really good question. Yeah, I think they, they, they still have little teams down at the park, you know, you know, girls, well, softball or... Mm -hmm. But is that affiliated with the schools? No, I think it's just a summer league, like, you oh, know, people from different towns, you know, are on the team. That's, That's great. Other than that, I'm not familiar with what's going on there too mm -hmm. much now. But. Yeah, well, you're working as we're going to find out. Uh, I, I'm thinking of baseball, but as the years <clears> went by, were you on a softball league? Yeah, I was, I played softball for uh, Sulla Pub. Mm -hmm. You know, in the the league here in town, you know. Mm -hmm. How long did you do that for? Oh gosh, probably a couple of years, anyhow, mm -hmm. maybe three. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm all right, all right. I heard and prove me wrong that you were scouted at some point in your life. <laughs> I was playing over in uh, Portland in a a uh, well all style league uh, and. Uh, Bill Marbouquet came by and talked to me a couple of times during the game. I, I don't know who he is, so you need he, to... He was the scout for the Red Sox. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So... Hmm. And... He, well, he found out how old I was, so... I was, I was 38. <laughs> My mouth is open. <laughs> They're scouting you at 38 years old. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And then did you audition for them or not? Or was the age an issue? No, I, the age probably was an issue, but mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Wow. Then wow. I had another team, uh, a manager uh, called me from uh, Canada to play. He said he could, he'd pick me up after work and he'd make sure I'd, he'd fly me back in the morning, which I never took advantage of that either. And, well, why not? Do, do you mind me asking? Well, I had a job working, you know, for the co-op and mm -hmm. whatever. But. That means you would have to leave them dry? Yeah. Sure, yeah. sure. Any regrets? Most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> what would have been like? What would have right. been like? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, thank you. That, that's kind of fun. I really heard you're being very humble, but I've heard you um, were a very good athlete. It seemed like regardless of what you went into, you tried. Here's a comment that other people from the surrounding areas have said, either privately to me or during an interview. The, the, the men who came into, the boys that went to the high school were at a little bit of a disadvantage because they didn't have the same opportunities to play sport, to learn sport. Right. And would you say the same thing? Would you agree with that? Yeah, I more or less had to teach myself, you know, how to play baseball, football, or basketball, you know. Amazing, amazing. And the friends that we went to school with, a lot of them weren't interested in, you know, playing sports or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. But they picked you up. I think it's pretty interesting that you were playing sport as a first year student, a freshman at the high school. Mm -hmm. That talks about the quality of the athlete you were, so. And wow. there were some big people in those years, you know. Do you want to drop a name? I mean, like the Witchers and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Couriers. Okay. Uh, Gumpy Courier, matter of fact, sure. played football with him. That's neat. That's neat. All right. You know. You just dropped And they were all big people. <laughs> there <laughs> I was like this. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. Let's switch over if we can a little bit. You've worked, it sounds like you've worked all your life. Mm -hmm. And you're still working now. Right. I'd like to go backwards. That story that you said when you were at um, the public school in Campton, you received a dollar and a quarter a month for various duties. Right. And, and those duties had to be met. Can we talk about um, other jobs that you've had over time, trying to go back to when you're young if we can, and then get older and older? I think, um, you yeah, know, when I was in that uh, grade school, I used to have a paper route, and it was a grip paper that I used to, you know, uh, deliver to different people on, uh, you know, 175 or Route 3, you know. I think it was like, you know, what the heck was it, 25 cents of 
for a paper back then. Mm. You know. How did you deliver? On a bicycle. On a bicycle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when it came springtime, you had to always sow seeds, you know, vegetable seeds. And they did the same thing, so. Uh, sow seeds. Talk about that a little bit. Well, I'd, I'd go around and people would buy seeds, you know, so I'd order them and then I'd deliver them. Hmm. You know? You're a little entrepreneur there. <laughs> 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 All right. Another job. You're getting older now. Another job. Let's see. Well, I worked at First National Store during high school. Which one? Down Plymouth here. Uh, well, it used to be Adams Market after, remember? All right. So it was the First National Store. So you're down to the Common now because we had two right. national, First National was in two locations? No. The one down in in the Common. All right. So that's their first one. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you stock shelves and, you know, that was, that was a big deal. Mm-hmm. And who, did you know anybody when you were working there, friends or? Yeah, Dick Martin used to oh. stock shelves. Right. Um, Dick Martin we had on a couple months ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, there's, there was a few, I think his brother did and uh, of course, uh, I'm just trying to think, uh, Sonny Jocks was there, he was the meat manager. Oh. He was a grumpy old. <laughs> Shh. All right. <laughs> he was grump, but, mm -hmm. yeah. but he did his job well, I'm sure. Oh yeah, you made sure. <laughs> See, here we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was prior to Adams coming in. Right. Yes. Yeah. All right. Because the uh, First National Store moved down to where Rite Aid is now. Mm -hmm. South Main Street. Right. Very good. Very yep. good. All right. And then Adams took over the big store. How old would you have been when you were working at the First National? Would you have been in high school? In high school. Wow. Oh yeah. Wow. Um, were there and was is Dick the same age as you? I'm just trying to think. Were there? They other... were about ten uh, ten days difference. So there are other kids there. The word I'm using, working there. Wow, I always think of older yeah, folks at that like time. Yeah, I think like Paul Fillion was also there working. Um, hmm. Of course, it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> All right, another job. The big job, the one that you were at for years and years. Okay, and I, after that, <clears throat> I went in uh, 1959. I started working on construction. Um, Let's see, and... Do you remember when you went into the co-op? Uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of here, but... Uh, yeah, I went into the co-op, uh, I think it was 1964. Hmm. And I've been there for 40 years, you know, but... Hmm. I, um, I, I need to ask you, where was it located then? I know where it's located the co now. The co-op? Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't the co-op. Back then, it was the REA, which was down underneath the liquor store in Plymouth, where Bachelor Tree Service used to be. All right, and I don't know what REA stands for. It was Rural Electric uh, Organization, or whatever it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. It was a type of company that, well, I guess it was owned by the more or less the, the uh, federal. Agricultural Department, the U.S., and uh, everything was cross-country. It wasn't nothing along the road, that, you know. Wherever they could get the shortest distance or whatever, they'd go. It didn't matter where, you know. It'd be over Cube Mountain or it'd be over Bridgewater Mountain. didn't matter, you know. What were some of your responsibilities? Oh, it was climbing, climbing poles, wow. repairing, putting wires up. Mm -hmm. During storms and stuff. Hmm. On snowshoes, axe, and a throwing rope. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking of the weather and how it affected your job. Four seasons we have. I can't imagine. It was cold. Me. It was wicked cold. Sometimes you'd be up a pole and be 25, 30 below zero. And it was cold. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. And then you went there for 40 years. Yeah. Can you talk about some of the people that you might have known early on? Oh, early on would be like, you know, 
Dick Zamperi or Dick Palmer or Avery, you know, Would they be ones. with us still? But no, they're long gone. They're long gone. They're long gone. All right. What did you and learn Bobby from Bobby Chase, you know, Bobby he's Chase. gone. Yeah, yeah. That's more now. Yeah. What did you learn from them? Well, you had to stick it out. You know, you couldn't give up. All right, all right. Was and it a strong... Sometimes you really didn't like it, but you had to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. So you trusted them? You had to. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm coming from. It yeah. sounds like it was a small community. Yeah. yeah, you had to rely on them. Yeah. Wow, wow. I just don't know what these people do in, in bad weather. When we've had those unusual ice storms over time, and you have to go out and make everything okay for us? Yeah, you have to locate, you know, where we got wires down, and we got to make sure the power's off first, you know. Yeah. And uh, you got to locate the wire, and then you might have to hike, hike back out to the truck, get material, and go back in the woods and put it up with flashlights. Were there any issues, uh, any incidences, uh, people got hurt? Yeah, over the years, but I, you know, different ones have. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you for doing that. Um, and then, after the co-op, what have we done? Well, I retired and I went out and bought two trucks. My wife drove one and I drove the other one. We paved for Pike and, uh, you know, different different companies. And, oh, wow. and uh, I sold one truck and I'm still using one truck every day. And you're still working? Still working. I'm up 3.30, quarter four every morning, take care of dogs, and do hustles, <laughs> and go to work. I don't know. <laughs> it's amazing. 3.30, quarter four? Yeah, and yeah. if I don't get up, the dogs don't tell you to get up. Oh, that's neat. That is neat. Wow. <laughs> but you also have another job. Your farm. Oh, the farm, yes. <laughs> you forget it because you do no. it every day. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, we have... Uh, Seven horses on the farm, and then we got twelve, to, well, twelve beef critters, you know. Mm -hmm. Wow! So they have to be fed hay for them, you know, during the summer. No downtime, it sounds like. No. 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 Mm -hmm. And I like it that way. Thank you, sir. Still working. How old did you say you were? <laughs> <laughs> I think a hundred. No, <laughs> eighty. <laughs> eighty. Well, it's unusual working full time at eighty and not one but two. I think yeah. that's the point that I'm trying to make. But you enjoy. I enjoy it. Yeah. It's half I can't it. sit down. Mm -hmm. Like sitting here is okay. Oh, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry on that one. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to bring up some topics if I can. We're halfway through the interview, and again, you can always pass. But if something comes to mind and there's a story with it, please consider sharing it with our audience that we have. All right. Now let's see if I'm going to go there. I need a sheet of paper, though. That would help, wouldn't it? <laughs> ah, let's see. Sure. When you think about your childhood growing up, is there anything immediately that comes to mind? That's really open-ended, mm. Bob. I mean that. And it was, that's its intent. Think about living in Campton, in the area, as a child, as a teenager, young adult, what comes to mind? Was it a good childhood? Did you play, did you have opportunities to play? Now we've just talked about sport, etc. Yeah, um, yeah. Maybe growing up young, you you had a little chores you had to do. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, well, if you didn't do what you're supposed to do, you know, you might be sent to bed or you oh. or you went and had to go cut a stick and so there were consequences hunting. yeah okay all right good enough on that one uh, we're so lucky to live where we are and we have four seasons so I'd like to talk about the weather uh, and if something something comes to mind let me know here we go over the years sometimes really we've had hurricanes we've had a lot of floods we've had ice jams anything come to mind Well, as far as floods, um, I've seen, like in Beebe River, 
wicked floods, you know, be halfway up the a building, you know, and even on the flats down by uh, the shank mill. Mm -hmm. Rand's gas tanks down there used to be flooded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you couldn't get into town, couldn't get out of town. Wow, wow. You know, but the floods aren't like they used to be. I wonder uh, if it's I, because I, they root. Do I'm they ever sure. reroute a river? Can you change the flow of the river a little bit? Not, well, I think it changes by itself, you know. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Fires. I remember the church b burning in town. Conquer that was next to what, Fraser's Diner? Oh, Methodist, uh, Methodist Church. Wow. Yeah. You're in the early 40s. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As a kid, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was devastating. Yeah. That was devastating. Yeah. yeah. The big one I know and remember, you too perhaps, is the Congregational Church right, that we had. Right, police and, station, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was in the early 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Vivid pictures. Um, did you ever, were you lucky enough to go to a fair? New Hampshire's just loaded with fairs. Not this year, of course, with No, I know. The, the Plymouth Fair was always the biggest and the best, you know. Why do you say that? Well, it was, it, it, you went to the fair and you knew just about everybody, kind of, you know. Do you have a favorite treat? A, a favorite what? Treat. Not really. Oh. Okay. Not really. All right. We try They're to, all good. Yeah. <laughs> we try to do onion rings if we can. Once a year yeah. treat. Well, the way they make them are huh. always yummy. Huh. All right. Let's see. Um, families and friends. Anything that comes to date. Certain birthdays, celebrations that you can remember. Grandparents' birthdays. Well, growing, growing up, you never had... Uh, you know, birthdays like you used to, I mean, like you do today. It was all, you know, just plain. Mm -hmm. Not many people, you know. Do you it, have a cake? I don't think, no. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. No. <laughs> uh, uh, you and I have seen a lot of changes in this town. I'd like to talk about some of those changes. We've had industries come, we've had industries go. What's your recollection? Hmm. Well, the shank mill would be one. Yeah. You know, that was always big and going, you know. Large employer. Yeah, and uh, of course you had all the trains, too, that delivered stuff to town. Cars and, mm -hmm. you know, everything. Fingers Just about Fingers crossed. I always tell myself the trains might come back someday, but I don't. Know, I think they will. I hope you're right. I hope you're right. It'd be safer travel for delivering goods than like myself out trucking every day or whatever. Mm -hmm. The traffic is so bad. They don't look out for you. You got to watch out for them. Very good point. Very you good know? point. Mm -hmm. How about West Plymouth? When you and I were a kid. Um, it wasn't there. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, I was going to say it was a dirt road, but no, I'm talking, thinking about another one. But no, it was one one road that went out to Smith Bridge and out by Toby's uh, horse corral. You know, mm -hmm. he had race horses. He used to. Fred Toby. Fred Toby. He owned that where Harris mm -hmm. Furniture is. Mm -hmm. That used to be Toby's. Mm -hmm. And of course, they were into uh, racing horses. And they had a, a well, there was a uh, place out back where they raced horses, practice, you know, training. Hmm. And then they had a big barn. I'm wondering, George Clark's house was out there. I wonder if it was very close. He might have preceded, might have preceded Toby's. He had land there for quite some time, hmm. in the uh, 30s, 40s, 50s. And I don't know how old George Toby was. He's not the Toby that ran for governor. There was a Toby no. in the area that ran for governor. You remember uh, Ted Toby and the Toby twins? Hmm. David and Donald, they lived uh, up behind the Amory. Absolutely. 
Sally Toby? And Ted younger. Toby, the old, uh, which would be the son to Fred Toby, I believe, that had or a relative, mm. had the uh, race horses. Okay, okay. Sounds like a good story I should follow up on, and I will. And I haven't heard from them, the twins, for years. I don't know. Hmm. But if they're still with us or not. Yeah, Sally uh, Toby lived in the same area, so I'm assuming some kind of relation, and I emailed her hmm. to get some historical information. Her, I think it was her grandfather might have been in a, the Revolutionary War area. Colby. Her name on the other side of the family was Colby. And if you go into the armory, there might actually be a sword or some kind of implement hmm. that he had at the time and a, t a picture was taken. So she got right back to me, but not around here. They've gone yeah. away. See, yeah. there was a George Toby that was related to Ted Toby, his brothers. Go. Yeah, yeah. Did Mr. Toby have a... He, no, that was Mr. Sweeney. I was going to say... Yeah, Ted Mr. Toby was um, uh, like a, a logger, a, mm -hmm. a log buyer, okay. you know. Yeah. He was a forester. Fun going back. We... we uh, Okay. I'd rest a little bit on that one. <laughs> was there a person in your family that really influenced you as a child? Part of growing up. Yeah, I would say with my grandmother. Mm -hmm. yeah. And her name again? Lulu. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And why so? I guess because uh, maybe she was a teacher and, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure. Calm and collected. Very much. Oh, that's a great one. That's a great one. And the grandfather's name again? I'm not sure. Benjamin. Benjamin. Oh, all right then. That brings me then. You have children. You have some children. And one of them, I think you told me his name was Ben. Mm -hmm. Is that the connection there maybe? Perhaps, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. neat. Um, let's see. And what was the name of your other child? T Todd. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what do they do today? What they do, Todd is, well, I, uh, he has his own business, you know, a little construction business. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ben is in the National Guard. He's some sort of uh, maybe, well, in charge of uh, Lebanon Armory, I believe. But he's been overseas, you know, Afghanistan. and He served in the military then? He still is. Wow. Yeah. All right. So he's, he would have some stories to tell, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That they're allowed to share. Um, I always, well, sometimes I ask the following question. Do you have memories of foods that maybe your family, your relatives cooked that you still enjoy today? Maybe you wish they were back with us so they could serve mm -hmm. you? Or I'd even go to the town in Plymouth. Is there something that you can remember from one of our restaurants Homemade baked beans. And who's that from? Grandmother. Grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> Grandmother. As a matter of fact, I make probably the best beans. And I took an end of my beans at the senior center amongst the ladies. And I took first place. <laughs> so. Thank you, Grammy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. Uh, all right, then. Um, this is a new question. I haven't asked this to anybody, but I'm trying to write a story on it, so I'd love information. Did you have canteen when you were in high school? Yes, we did. Okay. That was on a uh, Friday night, what I think. Okay. Or, or was it Saturday? I forgot. And but anyhow. Where was it? It was underneath the normal, well, the, the elementary school in Plymouth, Spear. downstairs. Spear. Yep. All right. Had a record player. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No bands, never had anything like that. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to go down as far back as I can <clears throat> and, um, to write a story about it. I have pieces, but I'm just trying to make it a little bit more formal than I have it right now. So Canteen was there. In what years were you in high school? 54. Yeah, I'm taking notes right now. <laughs> 54 to 58. All right. All right. That's very helpful. Thank you for doing that. Um, when you were a, a youngster, did you have a favorite... Uh, Hang out. Somebody mm. you'd like to do something with, and what would it be if? No, not not back then. No, it was like you know, 
-hmm. We stayed home. Or you really didn't go anywhere other than the, to the school, mm -hmm. the did grade you, school. Did you have a TV? Oh, no. Okay. Cause radio. I was, <laughs> radio. I was going to say, was it black or white or colored, but no. No, right. but then when you did get a uh, television, it was black and white, mm -hmm. and that was, oh gosh, probably the early 50s, wow. whenever they came out or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you and I had chatted once before, and you made a comment to me. Some of the companies that used to be here, you came up with Merrimack Farmers Exchange. Right. Where would that have been? Merrimack Farmers Exchange was, well, down where, well, it used to be Fred Chase, and it was down there uh, where they unloaded cars from the railroad. Mm -hmm. Where the senior center is today, maybe? No, the next building way down. Farther down. Right. Mm -hmm. On the left-hand side when you were down there. Right. That long building, mm -hmm. you know. And what would they sell? They sold grain, you know, all, all kinds of farm products. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, back then there weren't too many items, but... Mm -hmm. Every, everybody had a farm then, it seemed like. We had so many at one yeah, time. Yeah. We had 66 at one time, and I think today our latest stats that we came up with at the Historical Society was maybe six formal farms are existing. So, yeah, no, I know. So I'm mm -hmm. wondering if they went out or closed house because the farms were leaving us as well. I don't know. Hmm. Well, I think probably a lot of that stuff was contributed to the trains leaving. Bingo. That sounds. When you were know? the trains? Can we do that? In the late 60s? Oh, wow. Hmm. Putting you on I the spot. I would say, it? yeah. Hmm. Closer to the middle 60s, you know, right. if that. Wow. You know. wow, that's a good question for me to do some I'm not research sure. on. Hmm. But see, the kids used to come in from Warren and all those places on the train to high school. Absolutely, absolutely. We had two, two big tracks. And that was back in 54. 50s. 50s. Hmm. I know that we have some schedules in our building. But I've never looked at them to see if dates are on them to say maybe when those trains for public school systems. Yeah, because they, they had to go back and take the kids, you know. Mm. So those are the kids that probably had more difficult time playing sports, extracurriculars, right. etc. Yeah. But I always thought that the, that's the way it was with the farmers too. If your family had a farm, it was much more difficult and people have shared with me that they you'd have a duty in the morning and you'd have to be home in the afternoon to do those duties too. Mm. Yeah, those are different, a little bit different than today, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, it is a lot different. Yeah. 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 You know, you had to milk a cow before you went to school, you know. Mm hmm. Yeah. As you said early on of this interview, things have changed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they have. If you had to share something, if we had uh, a group of people in front of you now, the young folks, what stories might you share? What comments might you say to them? People that are teenagers, young adults, as I said, based upon your decades, eight decades, sir, I'm not there <laughs> yet. <laughs> um, what might you say to them? What have you learned over time? Yeah, what have you learned over time? How have things changed over these decades for us, for you? Respect others. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a theme that we've had here over the years that I've been doing this, respect mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. Anything else you can think of? Not really. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. As you reflect on your life now, and we have probably, mm -hmm. we have another 30 years to go, all right? In our oh, lives. yeah, yeah, exactly. Me too. Yeah, uh -huh, that's what I'm saying all the time. Um, are the things that you would share with people, what you've learned, not the young folks necessarily, what you have learned about life that they might be able to connect with? Hmm. You've been an athlete. You've been 
you've had many jobs, many jobs, one extensive, 40 mm -hmm. years worth of, met a lot of people during your time. What you learned from jobs, what you might have learned from those people. Hmm. Well, to get ahead, you got to have a job. Short and sweet. All right, right now. And that's pretty appropriate for where we are. We have a lot of people that don't have employment right, right now in our country. Sometimes, no, you know, they're not responsible for that. Right. Yeah, I mean, sure. too many people looking for free handouts. Oh, mm hmm, mm hmm. But, mm hmm. All right. So um, I'll give you another second. No, I won't. I'll give you another minute if you'd like to say something to the audience. Like what? Well, I always say I think we're blessed to live here. I can't help exactly, it. Exactly, yes. Yeah. I'm, I say that all the time yep. right now, especially with the situation that we're in. Yeah. Yeah. I love the seasons. People always But you know, it, we, all, we have an excellent view of the mountains. But. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be smart. Okay. It'd be a better view if it weren't for the mountains. Okay. Why? I, I, I guess I'm lost on that one. No, if they weren't there, you could see further. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, the, they're, being... they're so majestic. They're so beautiful. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you could do anything about that. Uh, <laughs> no. This this was fun. Thank you. It was fun going backwards. You're a man that ha you're a man of many, many talents. You've had a lot of jobs during your life. Um, and I'm always interested when I hear about one-room school houses and how those teachers, especially when there's one teacher, and how that person possibly could have done the job as well when they're dealing with children who are first grade to eighth grade. For me, that's amazing. Mm, exactly. Just absolutely yep. amazing. Um, did did mm. the older kids ever teach the younger kids? There, no. 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 So Margaret Avery, was that, what was it, Mildred yeah. Avery? Mildred yeah. Avery, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, they everybody had their own books, different. Mm -hmm. You know, and then they had their assignments and whatever, yes. and then their right. tests. And it's just amazing that these teachers were so talented yeah. then that could do that. And you, you never saw fights. Oh, wow. I, hmm. You know, never. Maybe maybe one or two, eight years or something, but no, everybody got along, even though. Well, it was just like a hen house, you know. <laughs> That's neat. That's neat. But I think, but you just said it. Everybody got along. Yeah. And now in 2020, I, I think more people need to try to get along a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We're lucky we've had those communities to think back on. I'm going to almost shake your hand, but not really. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Bob, for coming in. This was fun. I, I'm hoping the uh, audience enjoyed it as much as I did. I hope you had a good time today, too. I did. It, it Thank allows you. you to regress a little bit and think about it. And how do I finish every interview I do? I say the same thing all the time. Please, I hope you steal what we're doing right here, sharing stories with one another. And record, if you can, do some oral history of your family members, no matter how many generations. Too often, I, con I continue to hear the phrase, I wish I had asked them about this or that. So we're not recording enough. We're not writing down the stories. Um, I don't think I've shared this with my audience. My children do not know this. But one is 30-something and one is 40-something, and I still write them letters. I've been doing it oftentimes when I'm flying here or there, and I've put them away, and someday they will get my letters. So I guess my letters are my stories. I don't care what the medium is, but please think about doing that. Plus the pictures. We try to collect pictures during our interview. So take your pictures, print them off, and make sure you identify the event or the people. I think I'm done. We'll see you next month. I'm hoping. We don't know right now because of COVID. But thank you for joining us today. And Bob, one more time, thank you very much for sharing your stories. You're welcome. Thank you. Fun, fun, fun.